Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be looking at Stepper in Swift UI and how we can use it so let's get straight into it. So the Stepper control allows us to create a control where we can increment and de-increment a value so let's see how we can use this to build a control that allows us to increase the quantity of an item. So the first thing we need to do is give our Stepper a source of truth. This will allow it to read and write to a storage where it stores its value. If you want to learn more about this, I've done a video on this called Breaking Down State and Data Flow in Swift UI. So let's create a source of truth called Quantity for our view. Now that we've done that, let's add in our stepper and then we'll break it down. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to actually delete this text and instead we're just going to use a group. And then we're just going to add some text that shows this quantity. So let's do that now. And then finally, the next thing that I'm going to do is we're just going to actually now add in our step on and we're just going to discuss all the possible parameters and configurations that you could do very briefly. So if you just type out step on and then create an instance of it, you'll see that you have all these options. Now we're going to go through pretty much um, all the properties, but not right now because that would be a lot to take in. But you can see here that you have options where you can check whether you've incremented, de-incremented, you can set a title, you can set localization keys if you have a localization files, you can set a range, bind it to a value and all sorts. So the option that we're going to select is we're going to select the option where you can actually set a title, bind it to a value, um, also set a range and the amount of steps that it can do. So I'm just going to look for this now. Yeah, cool. So we're gonna go with this one here, which has these um, options, then hit enter. And then I'm just gonna type this out and then break it down. So let's just hit resume on the Swift UI preview if you haven't already. And then, So we're getting two Swift UI previews here. So actually, rather than using a group, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to use a VStack instead so we can see them both together. All right, cool. So yeah, let's use a VStack instead of a group. So if we um, just look at our stepper here, so we have the um, title that we've set, as you can see here. We also have the value. So this value is actually the binding to our source of truth. Whenever we actually update the stepper quantity by pressing the plus and the minus button it will actually update this value and also read from it as well and you can see here that our text is actually reading from this value as well so it can show us you know what it is that's what we're actually incrementing to you can see here that we set a range so this is using a close range which, is, which type is integer so we're saying here that within the range it should start at zero and it shouldn't go any higher than 20 so this is the minimum and maximum and here we define the step so the step is how much this can increment by. So right now we're saying this can increment by one. So each time you press the plus button, it will go up by one. And each time you press the minus button, it will go down by one. So in order to see this in action, so make sure that you've changed the group to a VStack. What we need to do is actually just hit run on the Swift UI preview. And if I actually hit the plus button now, you'll notice that it actually increments the quantity by one. And you can see here, and if I hit the D increment button, you'll notice that we can't go past zero. So we can't go below zero because that is our minimum. But what about if we were to add in um, the ability to actually hide this label here? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this and then break it down. So I'm going to add this in another VStack. So if you just hold down the uh, command key on your keyboard and click on VStack, you should see an option here to embed in VStack like so. And then what I'm just going to do is just create a bit of space and I'm just going to duplicate this option here. Cool. So if you want to hide the label here for this quantity, you may be thinking that I just need to delete the string. And if you do remove the string, it does work. But the problem that we've got now is that this is actually aligning the stepper to the right hand side of the screen, so the trailing edge. So you can't actually control where this is being positioned. So what we actually want to do instead is we actually want to remove this label that's still being rendered and get this in the middle. So in order to do that, all we need to do is just use the labels hidden modifier. And what that will do is it will now actually remove the label. So you can see that we don't have to have that extra space on the left hand side. And it actually allows us to position this 
in the center so we can now control where we want this to be laid out so you may also have instances as well where you don't actually want this label and you don't actually want to not have it a label at all and you instead want to have your own custom view in place well it's actually possible to do this by actually using the closure which allows you to add your own view as a label so in order to see this again we're just going to copy this v stack and then we're just going to duplicate it now the option that you want to use to do this is you want to make sure that you actually delete um this parameter here with a string for your label localized key so delete this and then you also want to make sure that you don't have the labels hidden modifier on it and instead at the end of your stepper you now want to add a closure like so and then once you add in your closure you should have the ability to actually put in a view here so what we're going to do is just move this text view and then within this text view we're just going to change the text so i'm just going to add in an emoji for a pizza Cool. So now you should see that we actually have our text in our label. So if we actually just run this now, what you'll notice is that if you hit plus, you'll see that they're all incrementing and the text label that we have here is actually changing when you interact with a stepper. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to do a bit of refactoring. So rather than them all reading from the same quantity example, we're just going to separate them out into their own individual ones. So I'm just going to do a two and a three. So if you just change this to two, and if we change this to three, and then for the second example, we'll just replace it with the two. Third example, replace it with the three. So make sure that in your second B stack that the text is using the quantity example two and it's being bound on the second stepper to the same property and the same on the third one so on the third one it's using the example three so now when you run it you should realize that they're not all updating they all have their own independent source of truths so they're not like conflicting with each other so before we go on to how we manage actions for incrementing and de-incrementing it's possible to actually register and listen to events from the stepper so for example a user could actually long press on the stepper and then release so we may want to collect the value that someone has finished long pressing on and we can do this using the closure on editing and change. So let's actually type this one out together and we'll see which option that you need to select. So what we're going to do now is just copy our last example. So we're going to create another state property called quantity example four. This is what we're going to use for our fourth example. And now we're just going to duplicate this V stack. And then this time, we're going to change this to be quantity example four. So what we actually want to do now is see how we can actually use the on editing changed closure to tell us when the user has started and finished editing with the stepper. So at the end of your stepper closure that we have here for our label, if you actually type out editing, you'll see that there's an option called on editing change. Now, if you don't have this, what you can alternatively do is you can actually just type out the stepper and then create an instance of it. And if you actually look for the options available, you should see this option here, which has a title, value, inbound, step, and at the end on editing change. So you wanna select that one. But what we're gonna do is just simply just append it onto the end of this closure that we have here. So if I just type out editing on editing change, and then you should see now that you actually get a closure which gives you a boolean so this boolean here tells you whether the editing has started or finished so what that means is that has someone pressed on the stepper and then has someone released their finger to stop editing so what we're actually going to do is call this editing started so it's clear and then finally within our closure what we're going to do is just print out the value for editing started and also the quantity for quantity example four. so let's do that now so because we're actually printing to the console we can't actually see that when we're using a swift ui preview so what we need to do is actually run this on a simulator to see this happening so i'm just going to run this on a simulator now cool so now we have this on a simulator on the right hand side 
So if I actually open the console by just selecting the button here to show the debug area, so you should see the console here. And what we're going to do now is just hold down on the plus button and see what happens. So you can see as I start to hold down, it tells me the current quantity is zero when I started pressing it. And when I release it, it tells me what the value was once I released it. So you could actually check to see what the user started with when they're adding it and also what the user um, finished with when they released their button. Cool. So now let's see this again in action. So if I just delete this now and if I actually just hold down the minus button and then just release it. Cool. So you should see here that we started off on 20 and when we released it, we're now on 7. We could also, if we wanted to as well, handle the increment and de-increment ourselves manually. But at the time of this recording, I don't know why, but for some reason with Stepper, it doesn't seem to play nicely when you're actually adding in your own logic. So I'll probably revisit this in a future video when it's actually fixed. So that's everything from me. If you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate if you left a comment in the comment section below. Also as well, if you gave this video a thumbs up, I really appreciate that too. And subscribe to the channel as well as hit the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.